does things contrary to the word. Also, why is it difficult to do the things God wants us to do, but so easy to do the things that the Bible says we must not do? I sometimes cry because I sound like a hypocrite, saying I love God, but my actions, attitudes, thoughts, and behavior are not in line with loving God. I try to be a doer of the word, but anger, bitterness, anxiety, and impatience rise above abnormally that I would appear to be like the devil himself, even though there is nothing making me angry. Pastor, this has hurt me for some years now. The painful part is that I know the truth, but it's difficult to experience the peace, and the more I become more serious about God, this thing becomes worse. But when I do not pray and read the Bible, it becomes normal. Please help, because I love God and want to be spiritually mature. Thank you for expressing yourself very candidly. Now, it's important for you to act God's word. You know, acting God's word is something that a lot of believers have not understood. If God says something about you, you've got to accept it if it's going to work. For example, your salvation became real when you confessed the Lordship of Jesus Christ and accepted that you were accepted of God. Remember that. Otherwise, it would never have worked. The Bible says, with the heart, man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Can you believe that God has deposited in you his nature and the qualities of his own nature? Can you believe that? Can you believe that with your heart? Can you believe that patience is in you rather than impatience? Can you believe that love is in your heart? Can you believe all of this? Can you believe that the nature of God is actually what you have in your spirit? Now, if you can accept these, then remember what the Bible says, to walk in the spirit. He says that if we walk in the spirit, we shall not fulfill the loss of the flesh. If we walk in the spirit, which means is we, if we act, walking in the Spirit means walking in the light of God because um, the, the, the walk of the human spirit is only real through God's Word. Otherwise, the Spirit walks in darkness because God's Word is the light in which we walk. So walking in the Spirit is walking in God's light, which is walking in God's Word, which means I accept whatever God says about me as the truth. And so I walk in that light. I only accept those things that God has decreed about me. Now, why should you be angry when you don't need to be angry? You caution yourself. Say, I don't know why I'm angry. Then change your thinking at the moment. Because your state of mind can affect you. So change your thinking at the moment. Now, you say, um, I got bitterness. God already told us to not walk in bitterness. So I accept what God has said to walk in love and not be bitter against anyone. So living in God's light is actually the solution. But presently, you are definitely living by your senses you're living by your emotions your emotions are controlling you all of these things you've written about are actions of the emotions the actions that are based on your emotions and the emotions are an expression of our senses so that's actually what's dominating you what you have to do now is let God's word dominate your thinking submit and subject your thinking to God's word. That's what the Bible says, that we should not be conformed to the word, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. That means the transformation that you want can come 
through the renewal of your mind that means the changing of your thinking replacing old thinking with new thinking of God's word now in the first epistle of St. John I'll read that to you chapter 1 from verse 7 but if we walk in the light as he is in the light we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ is on cleansing us from all sin if we walk in the light as he is in the light see I've got to walk in the light as he is in the light so he lives in the light of my justification he lives in the light of my righteousness he lives in the light of my holiness he lives in the light of my fellowship with him of my oneness with him that means God calls all of these things I just talked about real to God they are real to God I am saved to God I'm righteous so the Bible says if I walk in the light as God is in the light you see so he lives in that light and now he wants me to walk in that light to think only the thoughts that God thinks towards me he says if I do that we have fellowship with each other there's a oneness you see there's a oneness there's an agreement between God's spirit and my spirit again in Galatians chapter 5 from verse 22 but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace long-suffering gentleness goodness faith meekness temperance against such there is no law and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and loss. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Now, listen to what he says here. From that 22nd verse, he lists for us the fruit of the spirit. That means the product of the recreated human spirit. Which means if you're born again, these qualities are in your spirit. They are there. You may not feel like they are there. You may not even think that they are there. You may not even agree with yourself that they are there. But that's why God is telling you that they are there. So that you can know through his information that these things are there. And that's the only way you can act on them. If you will accept that they are there. I want to tell you again what God says you have inside you. So instead of your bitterness that you're thinking about, the impatience you're thinking about, the anger you're thinking about, instead of all of that, he tells you that now that you're born again, these are the qualities that you have in you. He says they are love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. He says you've got all of this in you. So what are you going to do? You're going to say yes to God. You say yes, I've got them in me. So you go, you go to your Bible yourself and study it for yourself. Galatians chapter, chapter 5, verse 22. Read it for yourself. And when you read it, you say, I've got this in me. As you read each one, you say, I've got love in me. I've got joy in me. I've got long suffering in me. I've got this. I've got this. And this is what will come out of me. So you declare that because your mouth was given to you to chart your cause in life. Your tongue, your speaking, your words will determine the character of person you will be. That's so important. Then, in the 24th verse, it says, And they that are Christ, they that belong to Christ, have crucified the flesh with the affections and loss. He didn't say they're trying to. He says, it's done. And so you say, yes, I belong to Christ. And all the affections and loss are gone from me. Then, the 25th verse says this, If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. So now that you're born again, and you have a life in the spirit with God, he says, let us also walk in the spirit. It's an instruction, which means you can. So you say, Father, I thank you. I can walk in the spirit because I live in the spirit. I'm born in the realm of the spirit. I have a life of the spirit, so I walk in the spirit. So from today, I walk in the spirit. And walking in the spirit is walking in all of those qualities that I just mentioned to you. So that's what you're going to do. It'll work. It'll produce results for you.